Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now, uh, you regulars would have noticed by now that we've been doing an awful lot of breeding. Lots of pairing of spiders lately. And uh, we've got many, many more to come as well. It's been very, very busy. Now, one of the things we often get asked, and that is, how do we sex our spiders? Especially when they're young. Well, today, we are going to have a little look at that and we are going to show you what we do here in the Beastie Room. Now, uh, there's many different ways of doing this. This is just how we do it. So, just to start through, we've got ourselves a couple of malts here. Um, now, this, this malt here, this is from uh, Cambridgei, Samopaeus Cambridgei. And as you can see, it's quite stiff. So what we do is we have our little pot of warm water. This is this is lovely warm water. You could take a bath in that. It's beautiful. And we put a little tiny bit of washing up liquid. That's the bubbles you see here. And then what we do, this is the part that we're interested in. This bit here. This is the abdomen. And this is where we find out whether it's a lady or a man. So what we do is we... Pop that in there, and as you can see, there's a lot of resistance there. See how the, the light sticks up on it? And that's because our spider is waterproof. And this is why it makes no difference when you soak your spider's enclosures if they're having trouble molting and all the rest of it. It doesn't make any difference to them whatsoever. Because they are waterproof. Right, so what we're going to do is we are going to leave that soaking in there. We put the lid on it, because that just keeps the temperature in there a little bit. And we'll pop that over there. And we'll have a little look at what we do. So what we got, we've got a normal desk magnifying glass here. And uh, for people like myself, who's getting on in years a little bit, you know, we need our glasses. This comes in very handy. This is useful. Then we have our digital microscope, which is the next stage. Now these guys here, this is... Um, this is a, a fairly cheap one off of uh, Amazon. I think it cost, I think it was about £70. And it does an absolutely brilliant job. Um, there are better ones, obviously, on the market. But if you're on a bit of a budget, this is definitely the way to go. And it makes it nice and easy. Um, we've also got our wallet of tools. Now in here, there you go. I've got everything that I need in here. Um... So I've got my uh, my tweezers. These are fine point tweezers here. Now these are really, really useful, as you'll see in a minute, for when we're trying to separate the skin. Because what happens is when a spider molts, as you would have seen on our videos, the, uh, the abdomen is actually, it folds up on itself. And because it's actually wet, it actually curls up and then eventually ends up in this tiny little mess, which we can actually see here. This is another malt here. And you can see on this one where we've dried up. This here, this mess here, is the abdomen. And you can see where it's all dried up and stuck together and all the rest of it. Well, we've got to try and separate this, so we have to soften it up, i.e. the warm water, with a bit of soap in it that does the job. So, we will give this one a try. It's not always successful. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes the abdomen splits or tears. We can't find the necessary piece that we need. So, we have to scrap it and we have to wait for our spider to molt again. So, it's not always a precise science like that. We don't always succeed. Um, we've got other bits and pieces in here that we need. Um, just our very just normal little sewing needles. These are very useful for when we're um, getting down to the nitty gritty. And we've got very, very small um, molts. So we use those as well. Um, we've got some others here for bigger ones. These are all just for manipulating bits and pieces. Got our scissors here should we need to cut a piece off or whatever. Sometimes it's easier to get rid of the legs and everything on the molt and just go straight in for the piece that we need. Right, let's see if our spider has done anything. Now you can, yeah, look, you can see here now 
our spider has gone from being really really stiff to actually reasonably pliable now but we're still the, we pulled these legs up here there we go you can see our abdomen is still there what we need to do is open this up which it looks like it might well do right so what we're going to do now that looks like it's damp enough so we're going to move this to our piece of tissue we can lay it down there like so while we're working on this one we're going to put our other one in and allow that to soak so hopefully that will be ready for us so what I do now is I now take this and I look on my magnifying glass and I can take my tweezers and I can just open this up and this is quite difficult for you guys to see at the moment but all will become apparent There we go. The white pieces that you can see here are the spider's book lungs. And that there in the middle there is what we're after. This is the epigastric furrow of this female spider. So what we're going to do now, this is a very, very obvious one to see. So we're going to switch on our magnifying glass and our microscope. And we're now going to put this under the magnifying glass. And we can focus in on there. And what we're looking for is that there. Now then, we can see from this... that this is in fact a female and we know that because when we look here these are my needles we can see now and we see the cross on the on the uh, camera there that this is the epigastric furrow and it creates like a flap of skin which is what we're lifting now you see we've lifted that and these nodules here are the spermithica so we can see them there and if we flick it back there they are there right on the edge of my needles and we can separate them there you go that is oh, we're hiding it now that there is the spermithica there and we have two one either side and this here is the epigastric furrow so this is what we're looking for. So this tells us, the fact that we've got this flap here, this tells us this is a, a mature female. Now you can also see the colour in here. This is quite dark. There you go. It's all there. You see we can just move it there. So when our male spider inseminates, he is looking at getting his emboli in here. This is what he's doing. It's right in here. This is where we fertilise our eggs. Right. So hopefully you can see that quite clearly. That is a Samopaeus cambridgii. And as you can see from that, this is actually a, a very large skin. And um, so it's very, very easy. We can we can tell from a large skin, obviously, much easier. So what we're going to do now, now we're coming onto a skin that is much, much smaller. So we'll put that one over there because we're finished with that. We know what that is now. So now we're going to come onto this one. And as you can see, in the time it's taken us to do that, this one is actually quite softening up slowly. 
This is the warm water that's doing that. Now these, as you would have seen on the Cambridge eye, it's very, very robust. This is a much finer, younger spider. So we're having to, what we need to do is open this up here. So sometimes, in, in, in order to do that, we can make life a little easier. And what we can do is we can snip off this portion here. Because all that's doing is getting in the way. And it's creating tension. So now that we've got that off, this will find it a little bit easier to open up. So what we're going to do, we're going to put that back on the tissue. Sometimes they open up easier in the water. And sometimes better in the tissue. Do that. I'm going to pop that one in there, let that one go as well. Here we are. And see if we can't tease this one out. Very, very delicate. The smaller the spider, the more delicate it is. We need a little bit of a steady hand. Don't think we're going to see this one. All right, we're almost there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move to the microscope because that will give us a much clearer image of where we need to be. And as you can see from that image, it looks a bit of a mess. Well, what we're looking for, this is a Malaysian earth tiger. And as you can see, she's around about two and a half inches. Now, as we can see from the tip of my needles, this is all torn skin here. This is a book lung, the white piece here. And everything you can see there is all ripped up. But the piece we're actually looking for is right there. And this is a female. Now we can see, uh, let me see, can you see that? Sorry, I've just lost focus. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now right on the end of my, my needle there is that is the spermithica there. And there's another one there. That's the bottom of the flap, the epigastric flap. Um, what I'm going to try and do now, I'm going to try and lift it. There you go. See it? That's lifted. And now that side. Got the crossing thing. It's above the cross, right, right on the end of my needle. Can you see that? There is the spermithica there. And there's that one there. There's always the two. And there you go. So that, I don't know if we can get a little bit closer. See if we get a little bit better image. If we can get in as close as we can. That's much better. Right. Let's try this again. And as you can see, you just need a little bit of patience. Take your time. 
And as I say, you can see how delicate this skin is. It's worse than tissue paper. And right at the end of my needle there is the spermithica there. You see there's one, two, side by side. You moved out the cross so we get a really nice clear. That's better. Yeah. Slightest little movement affects it. There you go. There you go, you can see them clearly now. Yeah. So that I believe is a female as well. So that's cool. We've got two females there. Now we've got one more that we can try. Have a look at this. Now these are just malts that have um, popped off today. We've managed to pick up this morning within our enclosures. Now this is from a, a Balfouri. And as you can see, she's uh, ripped it up. It's very, very stuck together actually. So I don't know how much luck we'll have with this one. We can give it a go. Okay, so put that on there. I'm going to need to come back on this again. Get our tweezers. And by using the big magnifying glass, it just makes it a little bit easier for me to see. Just so that we can open this up. There we go, look at that. So we open that up like so. Trying to make sure that we don't tear it. Very important that we don't tear it. All right, let's go back to our magnifying glass. Or microscope, I should say. And what we're looking for, there. Right then, now this, as you would start to realise now, that the spermithica on these spiders changes from each species. So they're all slightly different. And we saw with the first one with the Cambridge eye, you had two distinct fingers sticking up. Very, very obvious. With this one, we're looking at it here. This is a female Balfouri. And there's the epigastric flap there. And you can see the other side is there as well. There. It's not coming up very bright. Here we, oh, go. here we go. Now you see how, much, how different they are on this spider. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you get them any bigger? So look. Let's see if we can come in a bit. It's about as good as we're going to get. Yeah, that's cool. What we'll do is we try and move them again. So when they flip backwards, you can see this is this is the epigastric furrow here. So this is the whole flap here. And then when we flick them back, you can see the whole thing. It's very difficult to... It's difficult to film this, actually. It's, um, it's easier when you're doing it when you don't have to film it. Here we go. There we go. We're going to lift it now. See it there? There you are. You can see how clear it is. This here is very, very clear. On the other one, it was very dark, like the tops here. But yeah, there you go. So that shows a different type. 
very sticky this one but yeah there we go I think we've seen that I think they're coming out good guys I'm trying to move them um, in the picture and we can't do that obviously <laughs> Yeah. He's almost they're almost like wet leaves. There you go, look. See them now. Very difficult. There they are. So what we can see here, if we look on the camera, the, the epigastric furrow is here and then this here is the spermithica on one side and that's the spermithica on the other side and it and there's like a, a void here so you've got like two fingers yep and that is how it is that's how it works All right that looks a bit easier to see if you're doing it from the screen thank you yeah <laughs> <laughs> right then so as hopefully we've shown there, we've seen some um, some pictures. We've, we've had three different spiders there, and it shows that we've got three different types of spermithica, which is what we call the female parts. Now, um, what we're going to do now is we did do some, we've got some clips from others that we've done over the last few weeks, and we've got a couple of males. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to jump to those clips We'll show you those and you can see the difference. And uh, hopefully this will all start to make sense. That's the plan. <laughs> right, check them out. Well, here we have our Brachypelma bohemi. As you can see there, this is quite a large spider. Here's a good four inches or so. Now as we come in close to the microscope image, you can see the cross in the center of the image there. And that is basically pinpointing the spot where we can see that this is a male. You'll see the complete lack of epigastric furrow there. As we move the skin around, you see there is nothing there. And that white glaring spot in the middle that is what tells us this is a male there you go lack of epigastric furrow that is the white spot there no spermithica to suggest a female very clear Which is our electric blue, chillabrachis, electric blue. And we can see here, this is a very definite molt. And we can see the flap of the epigastric furrow, which is there. Very, very clear. Very, very clear. Now here we have a recently malted um, GBB and as we can see from the image on the camera 
This is looking very much like it's going to be a male. So we're going to zoom in, focus our microscope, and then we're going to zoom in with this camera. Hopefully we can see. So what we're looking for now is we're hoping to find an epigastric furrow, which will be a female. But looking at this one now, we can see here there is no no epigastric furrow. Yeah, and all we have is this very very small spot here, right at the end of the needle, right there. Now, as we can see, this spider here, this has got a leg span of around about three inches. So it's more than old enough. And we can see from this that this is, in fact, a male. As we can see there on the end of the needle, a tiny little dot just there. That is a male. Now here we have a, a very, very small mole, less than an inch long, of a Macrotheli gigas, one of our project spiders. And as we can see here, the skin is very delicate, very delicate. You can see how fine it is. And you'll also note there the complete lack of an apigastric furrow. There is no spermithica there, nothing at all. That is literally a closed pocket if you like and you can just see there it's quite difficult to unravel very very fine skin but you can see there on the end of the needle this is in fact a male so that's good news for the project wonderful news Right then, well, you've had a look at a couple of the others. Now, uh, we had a GBB there, which was quite um, quite obvious. And you can see there that um, you no longer have the flap of skin, the epigastric furrow and the spermithica are no longer there. What you're looking at is just a tiny, tiny dot. And that is what's showing us as a, as a male. So we, we, we've not got, not got the flap, we've not got anything else to, to find. So when, you're, when you start breaking down into your molts and you're looking, if you can't see nothing there, all you can see is a dot, then that, chances are, is going to be a male. Now, with some of the spiders, it's a little bit more confusing. Um, I think with our Sabar Blues, for example, uh, when we first sex those, they, they show a different... A different sort of um, layout with their males but I haven't got a skin at the moment but we will we, when we get one next we will run through those as well but they're slightly slightly different but generally speaking as a general overall look at um, how to sex your malts this is what we do in the beastie room and it works really really well so you can do um, this whole sort of setup you can do if you've got a decent magnifying glass like this you don't need to have a digital microscope. It just makes life a little easier if you're old like me. You know, you need that little bit of extra power to see what's going on. But I can see most of it with this, especially on the larger molts. Um, it's only when we're talking very, very small molts. Now, you'd have seen in the clips as well, we had a picture there of a funnel web, tiny, tiny funnel web. That spider is only that big. But we managed to get the skin and we can have a look and see what's what. Now, um, with them guys, the true spiders, the skin is ultra, ultra fine and it's really, really difficult. And I think I probably went through four skins before I managed to actually find what I was looking for on one particular skin because they tear very, very easily. So you've got to be real careful, real delicate. If you're a little bit ham-fisted like me, it's, it can be awkward. So just take your time. 
Soak your malts well in warm water, a little bit of washing up liquid, and you'll see that they can do that. Um, another good tip, if you can, we haven't got it here, but if you can, if you can have your malts lit up from below, so maybe like a, a piece of glass with a light underneath it, and then put them on that, you will often find it easier to see them like that if they're lit from below. It does make a big difference. Um, it's something we're going to look into um, because we, it is, we struggle with the light every now and again. So, um, yeah, that's a good little tip. That's worth looking into. Um, and a real good way of learning is, as we've shown here, we've got this, this one here. We already know this girl's a female because she's produced babies. We've had egg sacs from her before. But it's a great thing to be able to get them out, go through the procedure, soak them, get them under your magnifying glass or your, your microscope and check them out. And then it will give you an idea of what you're looking for. And once you start to see a few, you'll start to notice different species. They have slightly different genitalia and we can work out roughly, you know, pretty much what they are. So, yeah, when you do know what your spider is, that's the malt to start learning on because you will you already know whether it's a male or a female. So go with that first. Start with them and you'll get a really good idea. Right, I think, um, I don't think there's much else we can do. This is just a general overview, just to give you an idea of, of what to do. And uh, we've noticed from our comments from our breeding videos, many of you now are stepping into the world of, of trying to breed your tarantulas and your different spiders. And it's an amazing thing. It's a really, really cool part of the hobby. And uh, yeah, I wish you all the best of luck. You know, don't get disheartened if it don't always work, because it doesn't always always work here either. You know, it's very, very. Um, there's a lot to be learned, so we need to we need to keep pr plodding on and keep checking it out. So this will get you a step closer to your breeding goals, hopefully. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, it was useful. Don't forget, be calm. Be gentle and love your spider. I'll see you soon, guys.